Hello everybody and welcome to this video in which I am going to be taking a look at a number of linked games that have been released on the Nintendo Switch in Japan in recent weeks, but you almost certainly will not see them localized or released in the West. Now thankfully three of the four of them are very playable and enjoyable whether you know the Japanese language on any level or not, hence the value of this video I would actually recommend if you can get your Switch hooked up to the Japanese eShop that you give these ones a go. These four games are all precise ports of mobile flip phone games. Now, depending on where you lived in the world, uh, flip phones were not a big deal. I know that was certainly the case in Australia here, where we went from the old Nokia, Nokia bricks and uh, Snake to smartphones with their app stores without much of a transition in the middle. However, in Japan, flip phones were a big deal, and the, they were powerful enough to run really simple little games on them. As a result, a mobile game industry actually emerged there that we didn't see much of out west. Most of these games were never localized. One of the developers of those games has decided to put the experience flip phone screen at all onto the Nintendo, Nintendo Switch in kind of perfect renditions of what people used to play on these things. Now I'm going to write the names of each of these games out in the description under the video to help you find them if you're interested, but be warned that you're not going to find too much about them in English, as none of them were localized into English as far as I can tell, and none of them belong to a larger franchise that has a presence out here either. If you can understand Japanese, and of course you're going to be able to find it much easier to find information on them, but the reason I'm listing them out is if you decide to go looking for them on the eShop in Japan. Now the first is Fly Height Claudia, which is a simple retro-style JRPG that has a neat little vibe to it. It is uh, it's the one that is the least importable of the lot, simply because it does demand that you do understand Japanese to understand what's going on. It is a JRPG, it is story based. But the gameplay itself is quite simple and the game is very cheap. So if you do download it for kicks, you'll still be able to muddle your way through and it does have that retro JRPG vibe, which for people that grew up with the early Final Fantasies and Dragon Quests will be quite appealing. Next up we have Beach Volleyball Shizuku. Now I do love my beach volleyball and putting jokes aside about bikinis, it is actually one of my favourite sports, so I'm always keen to check out games that tackle it. Beach Volleyball is of course very simple to play and indeed it takes place over a 2D plane with the action going back and forth rather than moving around three dimensions as you might expect for beach volleyball. That being said, this thing is actually a lot of fun and actually has nice smooth clean controls. It's very casual but for an underrepresented sport in video games, it is colourful, charming, and it is a delight to actually play. There is a fair chunk of narrative to this one, be aware, but if you do import it, it's largely unnecessary to follow along with that narrative, with the action itself being quite self-contained, so don't let that get you down. You're seeing, for example, just a little bit of the narrative here, plus the characters. It's just a lovely, clean, colourful design and very light and airy and very casual. It's a lot of fun and it is, kind of represents what flip phone games and early era mobile phone games did when they did them best. The third game is Kururin Star Cafe and it is a match three puzzle game that has a rotation basis. So you rotate a block of four icons around and your goal is to make sure that three icons end up matching in a row of three vertically or horizontally. The icons that you're matching are all some variety of sweet to match the cafe aesthetics and it is a very standard but very colourful and bright implementation of the genre. This one is very easy to import and play simply because everybody knows how to play these match three things at this point and you'll be up and playing almost immediately. Something I should have mentioned across all the volley, all the games, sorry, is that because they are so simple mobile games, the menu systems are very clean and very quick to get into the games and you don't have to spend too long muddling around tutorials and stuff either. You just select the mode that you want to play and you're right into it and there's usually only you know three or four different options. These are very accessible games if you still don't know Japanese but need to get through the menus and get into the game and game themselves. Finally we have the most esoteric of the four in terms of design and it's called Ai to Rodo no Hibi which is the footage that you're seeing on the screen there in front of you right now. It's a physics puzzler basically, and you've got the goal of guiding the blue bear there to roll a ball into the center of a playfield and do that over and over again for a minute, avoiding obstacles along the way. If you do well, you get paid, which you can use to buy things. It works basically like a salaryman satire, 
And the humor does come through even if you don't understand the language. This one's a little bit of a delight to play, even if it is a little bit, uh, I guess, surreal or oddball to start with. Once you get into it, it all makes sense, it clicks, it's actually really enjoyable. Now what attracted me to these games in the first place was the cost of them. They were all just a couple of hundred yen which worked out at a few dollars each. So it was a low risk investment in case I found them to be unplayable or unenjoyable. But there was more to it than that. These games represented an intriguing part of the Japanese game history that I've never really had the chance to experience before. So I got to, I guess, a window into a part of retro gaming that we don't often get to see. As I mentioned, in Australia, flip phones were not a big deal, and I basically went from having a Nokia and Snake be my idea of mobile gaming, to the iPhone and what we now recognize as mobile gaming. This whole world of Japanese mobile games is something that's a little lost to us in the West, and as simple as they are to look at and play today, it is worth remembering that they came at the same time, before smartphones really engaged, were, were out there and engaging people, and they are certainly more engaging as games than Snake. When we look at the Japanese games industry now, mobile gaming is a big deal over there and developers are de dedicating a lot of resources to creating some pretty impressive stuff. I do believe that it was the flip phone stuff that really established the viability of these kinds of experiences in that market. So by playing these, you do get a, a real sense of where the Japanese video game industry is coming from, how it's been able to develop over time and those kinds of um, you know, those formative experiences that really established what is a very different market to the West these days. Uh, the Japanese games market is is different. Uh, and, you know, it's because they had these kinds of experiences that we never had in the West. Or if we did have them in the West, we didn't have them to the same prominence that they did. Now, as ports, these games are all quite simply done. I obviously haven't had the chance to play the originals that they're based on because, again, never had access to them. But I have read that the developer went out of their way to really capture the detail of the experience of what it was like to play flip phones. And what that basically means is that there are clunky, clunkiness to it, but it's a deliberate kind of clunkiness. So you may remember if you did play these old phone games, if you were lucky enough to have a feature phone when they were like this, uh, or if you're like me and you just played Snake or whatever. There are a couple of things about those phones that made them less than ideal for video games. They had limited screen refresh rates, which meant the movement across the screen was a little bit clunky for sprites. And when you pressed buttons, it was there, there was a delay, a noticeable delay, before the, uh, the character would actually respond. And that was just to do with the technology. It was all very primitive and it wasn't designed around playing video games. So the fact that all of that has actually been recreated in these games is actually good. It doesn't make for perfect playability as such, but it does maintain the authenticity of it. And because these games were built around the limitations of the hardware, and they're all particularly good examples of flip phone games, they're all very playable anyway. So you won't notice the fact that it's not as smooth or as clean as to play as some equivalent games that are modern. But you will definitely get that nostalgic feel for them, even if you didn't play too many mobile games or never had a flip phone, you'll still feel that retro vibe from these. So that's a good thing. Now, in terms of what the developers have done for the ports, they're all very simple, like I said. There's not too many options. You can choose to play full screen, which isn't full screen, but it just removes the uh, borders on the, uh, the mobile phone thing that you see there. But I quite like the aesthetic of this phone as well, because again, it contributes to the feel of the games when you have that kind of that border, the bezel effect. I really enjoyed that, so I left that on. But that's basically all the features you get. These games are very cheap, they're very cheerful, and they're very historical, so that's why you might want to play them. Anyway, I hope this has given you something to perhaps check out on the Nintendo Switch eShop. This is it for this video. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos so I can do you know plenty more and you won't miss any. Please do consider backing me on Patreon because that helps a great deal. Otherwise, we will see you at the next video. Thanks very much again for watching.